more of a good conversation about how we potentially help couples things. Yeah, that would yeah. be great. Yeah, because it seems like um, what you guys offer is probably even more um, relevant right now. Um, I, my husband and I struggled with infertility um, when we first got married. Um, and I don't think you guys were um, around at the time yet. Um, so I'm really interested, um, and I think maybe this, it's, it's good that I'm doing this interview because I, I can ask questions and come from the perspective of somebody who's been there. Yes. Um, so, not, yeah. Not that I'm glad that you went through the suffering, but it's uh, your ability to help give back um, you with this and, and all the other things that you will do. It's just, it's, it's one of those things until you've been there, it's really tough to, you yeah. know, yeah. to relate, you know? Yeah. Yeah, um, a friend of mine who has dealt with um, secondary infertility and, and miscarriages and things, um, who also teaches uh, with the couple to couple league with her husband, made a comment to me once about, you know, I didn't think we would have to go through every single scenario that we teach about, but <laughs> it seems like <laughs> something that God wanted <laughs> wanted from us, so it would, you know, help our teaching, so we could have yeah, exactly. empathy with our. Um, with our, our students. So yeah, kind of taking, taking our experiences and thinking what, what is this made possible? How can it help me in my, my ministry, which I, I kind of see what I do as a ministry. And um, yeah, but anyway, um, so I would love to know, I, I've already read um, that I think an interview that we had done with you guys, maybe Mary Rose had done it with That's you right, yeah. um, on the site from, I guess a year or two ago now, it looked like Probably. it was a little older. Um, but so maybe just start off with your story and how, you know, kind of going off of what we were just talking about, what about your experience um, made you want to think, how can I help others with this? Yeah. Well, I guess, you know, similar to the conversation about why certain things happen in your life and does this help you better prepare or to guide others, or teach others, whatever it might be? So my wife and I struggled to conceive for many, many years. It was actually close to eight in total. So we dealt with primary infertility and then secondary. And along those eight years, we had this instance that so many people hear about, especially when you're trying, which is the story of the couple that tries for years and decides to alter their path, yeah. adopt a child, travel the world, whatever it might be. And then they have the surprise unexpected, you know, miraculous conception. Not to say they're not all miracles, but there's this surprise yeah. event that occurs. Yeah. And um, for my wife and I, Grace, that happened to us not just once, but two separate occasions across those eight years where after <laughs> years of trying, the first time was four and a half years for our son Maxwell. And you know this, you mentioned that you had some struggles as well. There's nothing, there's no real word to describe what it means when your entire life becomes 30 day increments where yeah. you go from hope to despair. And it doesn't take long before that cycle is just owning your psyche, owning the decisions you make, owning the way in which you see the world. And it just, uh, what a hard place for, I think yeah. women, but certainly the couple dynamic. Oh yeah. Um, really our love for life just could so easily through this process be lost. Yeah. So, um, yes, on two separate occasions, after truly like shifting our path, we had the surprise, unexpected conception. Um, what's funny about that is my wife and I, um, these are the stories we actually couldn't stand hearing when you're struggling. No. Because, <laughs> that's what's funny about this whole thing. It's like, trust me, anyone listening, like, I understand. If someone, yeah. people go out of their woodwork to tell you about their yeah. friend who adopted a child and miraculously they conceived, right? Yes, or your mom telling you over and over again, have you just stopped trying? Have you just decided not to try? Yes. I know it'll, it'll happen for you then. I heard that so many times from my mom. It's, well, it's people who love you and who mean well who tell yeah. you these things. And they, yeah, it is, it, you do not want to hear it. You don't. You don't want to hear it. It made us feel like we've created the problem. I mean, it indirectly yeah. says you've created such a yeah. stressful environment. If you could just let go, yes. this would happen. Or secondly, we always felt like, so what do we have to pursue some other path that really is not the way in which we saw ourselves building our family at that time yeah. to kind of convince and trick our bodies to have this unexpected surprise conception. And, yeah. you know, both, both things are just at the end of the day, not very helpful. Um, I think if anything became stories that you'd rather just not hear because it just didn't yeah. help the situation. 
but I, I guess in terms of like why th this happens to you and why life sends you certain things, after the second time it happened, you just, I couldn't help for literally years, 10 plus years after our son was born going, gosh, you know, living this twice on both instances, I, I didn't have the words to describe what, what was happening, but it was clear that there was far more happening than the act of adopting a child. I think the way my wife looked at herself, her body, our relationship, choices we made on both instances, there was just so many things that I felt were different. And uh, I was really just became frustrated, both my wife and I, that, you know, we grow as a society through shared learnings. And you hear these stories all the time. Good Morning America, there's constant promotion of the story but never has anyone gone deeper to research these stories, to understand, are there insights, patterns, commonalities? Is there anything there that can emerge um, to not suggest an unexpected surprise conception? I don't think ethically it's uh, anyone's job to suggest an outcome, but is there something that can shine a big spotlight that there's more to this? We are more than just physical beings. There's an emotional element, there's a spiritual element, and when you can bring all three into alignment and harmony, it's pretty incredible what, what can transpire. So that kind of was the, the seed that said, wow, no one's done the research. What if we went ahead and did that? And I met a woman, Dr. Kate Webster. She's a research psychologist, a PhD in multivariate statistics. She and I became friends through my corporate world years ago. And I just said, would you ever help me to, I believe this happened to me for a reason. I believe that we need to do something with our own personal story. And I got to believe there's more behind these stories that can actually help others. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's such a need for um, viewing the whole process as more than just the mechanics. Um, like you said, there, you know, the emotional factors and, and the spiritual factors and relationship factors are, are huge. And especially with um, artificial reproductive technologies, it's all about the mechanics and that's it. And um, yeah, I think there was a real need for for you guys to to take a deeper dive and I'm so glad that you you kind of took that that pull that you felt um to to go that route and dive yeah um, well, thank you but I think you're right I mean you mentioned that it's so easy for it to become mechanical though and I, I always try to help people know that we did as well for years we didn't pay attention to our ourselves if anything you know people think about emotional health as like okay that's you know that's a therapist that's mental health I don't need that. I'm a young couple. We're trying to pursue our family. And a lot of people just, there's a stigma that exists in terms of wanting to like emotionally connect and understand what it is we're, we're going through. My wife and I have years, we never did either. We just, you become so fixated on the mechanical process, your cycles, the timing, the charting, all the stuff that at the end of the day, you just kind of dismiss yourself as you're just trying to find the fix, yeah. make this thing go away. So it's easy to, and I think what you said, it's it's not one or the other. We're physical beings, we're spiritual, we're emotional. We got to bring all three into alignment. But I think there is a stigma where people think about mental health as something you do if you've been trying for long, long periods of time with lots of devastating issues that have happened. When it, it when at the end of the day, our emotional health can actually empower our reproductive health. The way in which we're thinking about ourselves and our bodies in this process can actually contribute to the chemical makeup of our body. So this isn't something we do as a reactive state to solve depression. If someone's depressed, go see a therapist. But this is, how do we put our mindset? Because it doesn't take long within just a few months. We've already started to grasp a story about what's happening to us. We know someone else has struggled. We've been worried about our age. There's all these factors that are just dormant that the minute we start to have this, these, these delays in conception, the way we thought it would happen, very quickly, this is, we're driven by fear and panic. I'm running out of time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I, um, I've been there. I know it. You're um, putting words to every everything that we experienced, and we didn't even experience it for nearly as long as you did, and for a lot of other people do as well. Um, but so I'm, I'm curious now. You know, these some of these statements you're making about how we know that our emotional, you know, state and the way the stories we're telling ourselves about what we're going through how that actually does have a concrete impact on our biology. So obviously, um, and you talked about the psychologist that you teamed up with, what kind of research do you have to back up these claims that you're making? Yeah, well, the first, well, well the, first, the first thing about the research which is important to note is that you know, we're the first to go out and try to uncover all variations of these stories of couples that, 
that struggled for many, many years and then had the surprise. And, well, um, finding mission. If, and Dr. Kate Webster, if she was on this interview, she'd say, the first thing she told me is, Mark, there might not be anything statistically that links these stories. Yeah, when you get yeah. into research, you just don't know. There's just no guarantees. And um, what we, and when we had people that had PCOS, PCOS, advanced age, endometriosis, low sperm, you know, weight issues, all these factors, and, and people had this unexpected perception. And what we found, Grace, is that there was these nine emotional stages, these, these transitions. We have this little journey map that we put together that, that helps help us to kind of see this roadmap. And what was really fascinating is every story would start to map to one of these transitions. And um, what the program is really designed to do, just to be very clear to everyone, is um, it's about the quality of life that we're living while we're going through a particular struggle. So when you can normalize what someone's going through, and so many couples say, oh my gosh, I found myself in these stages, just to normalize that what you're feeling is okay, to validate some of these extreme emotions and thoughts that we have, when you can meet someone where they are, then together, I think we as a community can help empower couples. And there's a shift that can occur to allow us to, um, to change the relationship we have with this journey that we're on. Because for so many, we're resisting, we're just trying to push past it. So at the end of the day, I just want to let you know that the research, it was amazing because Dr. Tate said, I can't believe how repetitive the themes are. Yeah. Story, which is now mapped to one of these transitions. And that's important to know because most people, they feel so alone. Yeah. They feel so by themselves for the thought. A lot of people said, I actually hated myself for the thing I was thinking. I was in Target. I see a woman with a baby and I'll, why, how dare her? Why did she have that baby? I see a low income family and have kids. Why can't I have these kids? The thoughts are real, they're raw. And we got to help meet them that it's okay. And this has been shared by others. That alone starts to take some of this weight off where well, you're not broken, you're not damaged, you're not being punished by God, you're not with the wrong partner. So a lot of the program, it's a seven hour cognitive based program, but a lot of it is really just helping to normalize what it is that they're going through. Just like stages of grief, there's a common way in which we all grieve. Does it take it away? Nope. We're still going through these movements, through these transitions, but does it allow us to feel more normal in the process? Is it empowering to know others have gone there? And then yeah, yeah the program, through all those stories, course you want to give people tools and strategies where they can start to realize it's normal but recognize how these aspects are showing up in their own lives because for many they start to define themselves by what's not happening yeah we start to architect that story with a lot of false and limiting beliefs we start to become so compliant around the diagnosis or the label that we've taken on whether it's our age whether it's a diagnosis from a doctor whether it's how long we've been trying but that starts to become our lens into the world and for so many couples, they, they kind of lose themselves, they lose each other, and there's definitely the loss with our connection to life that occurs yeah. here. So to answer, so specifically, there's a lot of research. We try to be very careful that ethically, we don't suggest an outcome. We tell people all the time, if you're not willing to, if you don't have that courage and vulnerability to emotionally kind of open yourself up, and, and it takes courage to do that. And to do it as a woman, it's, it's even harder to do that as a couple. So we don't really suggest anything about an outcome except for everything we measure has to do with their quality of life around their sense of self, the way they think about themselves, their bodies, the efficacy with their bodies, their ability to cope, where they have the anger and the jealousy and unsure what to do next and all the things they're trying. And then thirdly, how to stay connected and engaged with life. And that's the things that we measure. What happens next, nobody knows. And in the people in our research, Dr. K would say, they had no idea there was going to be a surprise anything. But it was people that came back to themselves, each other, life. And surrendering doesn't mean we're not trying. I think people see those as yeah. exclusive. I'm either trying or yeah. letting go. And yeah. it's how those two could actually coexist. Yeah. That's the beautiful part about it. So we don't ever make any claims. We don't, even the best doctors can't make those claims. So we try to be very careful that if someone's looking at this as a to-do item to conceive a baby, probably not the right mindset. It's about yeah. owning the process of our journey open ourselves up to where our journey is taking us, understand that our time now is valuable. We do all these stories and all these research that starts to help couples get to that place that, oh my gosh, I feel a renewed sense of how I'm going to approach my steps forward. Yeah, it kind of, it sounds like it, um, it helps you gain ownership over what's happening to you rather than um, having what's happening going on own you and own your life. 
Because I like that. That's, yeah, that's definitely the overwhelming feeling that you have when you're going through this is that you're owned by your diagnosis, you're owned by your age or, you know, whatever aspect it is of your infertility that is, is weighing so heavily on you. You do yeah. feel like it owns your life. And, and when we when we're in a threatened case situation or mindset, we we want to obey. We want someone to tell us the answers and tell us the way. And that's why I think a lot of people do turn to uh, treatments that might not be the right treatments for them, for yeah. them, for their faith, for for other reasons. We're just in a state of panic. Anyone that shows us the roadmap, we just want to jump in. And your word control is is, is well said because I think that we kind of relinquish control to the experts and we start to lose our intuition, our trust. And we don't feel like we matter because we've taken on that label, that identity. And with that identity and diagnosis comes some statistics on our odds of succeeding. And we are just want to be so compliant and do all the right things to solve this and fix this. And what gets lost is the human experience is part yeah, of it. Yeah. I just, I just, I just, I algorithms like, you know, I have this diagnosis, so I need to do X thing and then I'll get X result. And Again, that kind of goes back to just viewing all of it so mechanically and so in such a detached, um, yeah, mm -hmm. mechanical sense. And um, that's where you know, our organic conceptions is doing such an incredible thing by, you know, kind of the mechanics are important, obviously, but they're not it and, and, and broadening the focus, um, which it seems like is what you guys are all about. And our, our, our best work is with a lot of the NAPRO doctors and, and a couple of couple of trainers and, and great model practitioners. And it's, it's a coming together, all of us. It's not one or the other. It's just there's a physical attributes of our bodies that we need to better understand and get to the root of understanding what's happening. But um, I think that we are sometimes quick to dismiss the, the emotional component, not as I'm depressed, I need psychological help. It is more of how do we put our minds in the best position, just like we're trying to get our bodies in that best position for success. How can we actually go do the same? And I, I think a struggle that we've had, to be quite honest with you, is people sometimes think about like yoga, meditation, things to self-care type things. All good. We're not here to judge. Yeah. You'll feel better for that hour, those two hours that day, but the thought will be back. What's common is the thought can linger, will drag me, the what if scenarios, how about this? What if this? And all of that mental anguish, our internal thoughts and dialogue that we're just kind of constantly living with and fighting with. And in many cases, we're suppressing the thoughts, not willing to really go there. And I think we've got to get to the root of the thought and start to give people um, the tools to realize that you have some choice in terms of how you interpret the thought. Um, you have some choice in terms of the meaning that you give it. And you have a choice in terms of the life you create around it. And through yeah. all the research, you find out that you matter. You yeah. matter. And staying joyful and love and hopeful and connected as a couple, that can actually be the best prescription that you get. It's yeah. just yeah. hard to see it that way when you're just feeling like you got to get this thing behind you. Yeah. Yeah. It keeps you in life and, like you're saying, you know, robs you of a lot of the joy of, um, of your life in that time period. I, I look back on, um, you know, our journey and I do feel like a lot of the joy was sucked out of, uh, you know, our life during that time, wishing we could like go back and have a, have a do over. Um, and yeah, to do all the things that you're talking about, just to own the emotional, emotional state. Um, and I think too, um, what's great, it sounds like there's there's a focus on getting both of um, the, the man and the woman and the couple together, kind of talking about these things, um, getting them, you know, both to, to buy into the emotional aspects of it, because I do think um, there, you know, men and women are different, infertility affects men and women differently, and that can be a huge source of um, of conflict, obviously, when you're, when you're dealing through it, with it. And I know for, for us, I remember, um, you know, I would get my period and I would just be down in the depths of despair. And part of that was, you know, because um, of what my hormones were doing at the time. And it was also, you know, the lost hopes for that cycle and, and everything else. And, um, for women having to 
every time you go to the bathroom, you're reminded. And that was kind of something that I had to, had to really kind of communicate with my husband because he'd be, he'd be really upset too when my period would start. He would be, you know, just as upset as I was, but he'd get over it, you know, within a day or two. And I would still be sunk down deep until basically until the next cycle started. And after going through that for like several months and him kind of getting, I think a little frustrated with me, like, why can't you pick it back up? Like, why can't you just get in the mindset of every cycle is new and, you know, we're going to try again. And, um, it finally kind of occurred to me after several months of that, like, look, you know, you, you're, you're sad for a day and you get over it and you're ready to try again. I, every time I go to the bathroom, I remind, I'm reminded (laughs) of what my body failed to do that month, basically, you know, and it's that constant reminder for that whole week. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, men and women do, that's when it really hit me like, wow, we're really experiencing this differently. And when I was able to put it in those words to him, he kind of like, I think the light bulb went off. And I think we were able to understand each other a lot better when we understood how we were coping with it separately. And I think that really helped us cope with it together. Wow. So talking about, you know, the work that you're doing with couples is so important. Um, That's powerful. I mean, just the way you articulate it is, you know, I got the chill. I mean, that's powerful. The fact that you have, it just wasn't the 24, 48 hours. It was that that stuck with you and you, that whole week you had to live with it. And yeah, that's, um, I think that a lot of people, first of all, women generally take on a lot of the ownership because even if the, even regardless of diagnosis in the research, you find that women just ultimately felt my body, I need to solve this. I need to overcome this. And women just generally just take on a lot of the ownership and burden. And, um, and there's generally, you're right, in our research, we realize the way a woman's experiencing this is way different than that of her husband, neither right or wrong, but it's that ability to better connect, normalize, validate, and communicate. Not, it's, you know, the woman's extremely overwhelmed, the, the, all the metrics in terms of the woman's level of complete, you know, the fear and the panic and the, this is why I'm on the planet and the urgency was so much higher than that of her uh, husband. However, and again, neither right or wrong, but it is that ability to start to find that common ground yeah. in which so many women will say when they complete the program, it's just so good for my husband just to know that I wasn't crazy <laughs> and, and that just to better understand that what I'm going through and experiencing and the way in which I'm going about this is, is very much a normal experience. So like anything in a relationship, you know, and this is the incredible thing that, you know, here's a chance for a couple to get stronger together. And it's when we grow, when we grow under uncertainty, our characters are defined when things aren't going well, when things are going well, whether it's financial health, whatever it might be, it's just, you don't really test the true relationship. And I think for a lot of people, this is an opportunity to do what you just did, which is better understand, better connect, better validate. And uh, a lot of what we're hoping in, in the program to do is actually just you know, bridge that gap. And, and like anything, it's about meeting in between. I think a lot of times husbands are trying to be protective and it'll be okay. Women are in a more extreme state of panic. And our ability to lean into both areas, I ask men to be a lot more vulnerable and open up and really understand what it's like to be in the woman's position. And also for women, that they have someone that does believe everything will be good and that you still have each other and there's wonderful gifts yeah. still ahead and our ability to come in between. But the biggest issue you have is when there's a separation. A woman is enduring it. She feels the ownership of every decision to make. Husband's doing his best, being supportive, but they're almost two ships going at this in a completely different way. And at the end of the day, this is about connection, relationship. You're about to build a family. And I think this is why women sometimes need so much external support. And there's, you know, support groups and everything else. They're looking for someone to say the right words. The healing needs to happen at home as a couple. Mm -hmm. And again, and with therapists too, for sure. But at a minimum, we're trying to reach people at home and do this collectively as a couple. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, <laughs> I'm just, everything you're saying is, uh, I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down, for yeah. sure, <laughs> somebody went through yeah. it. Well, I, well, you know what, why did I do this? You, I did it because I wish someone told us that we mattered. I wish someone, in every crazy thing my wife and I did, and I'm sure you know it, think about the things you tried. I mean, every part of your life is under mine, a, a, a scope in terms of, what you eat and toxins and diets and how you having sex. And I mean, every part of your being is completely under 
scrutiny and to know that we mattered as a couple and our connection and things we love to do actually matters and that that can coincide with whatever particular path we might be heading down. I mean, you, you kind of, you're trying to do what wasn't there and the research to really support that our emotional health and well-being and reproductive health are, are not two independent systems. Our bodies know when things are safe. Our bodies know when things are dangerous. And a lot of couples will tell us before they even start trying, Grace, they're worried. They're worried about their age. They say, I put my career first. I'm worried about for people that, you know, who are on birth control, wondering what that potentially did to their body. There's thought that exists already. So it's about how do we start to reflect and bring people the tools to, you know, treat their their mental health and their relationship alongside. The whole person, the whole, the whole relationship too. Um, yeah, it's so important. Um, so how many couples have you had go through to program? Oh, we've, you know, hundreds and hundreds at this point. You know, we're lucky that a lot of the uh, practitioners, um, like I said, create in and you couple to couple and a lot of the NAPRO doctors, our whole model is to make this kind of part of the preconception care model. We don't mm -hmm. feel like couples, there's so many choices they have to make. Everything financially costs money. A lot of times you're not sure what to prioritize first. There's so many things being thrown at you from your doctors and websites and moms and friends. And so our whole mission, honestly, is that we have some doctors that just, um, they pay us a monthly fee and literally every single couple gets our program as a standard part of their preconception care. You can't take out what is the elephant in the room, which is this is an overwhelmingly difficult and emotional experience. There's not any one person working with anyone in the industry that treats fertility that's excited to be there. So our whole mission was to not make this another difficult choice, a difficult financial decision. And uh, so a lot of our work is working with practitioners and caretakers in the NAPRO community to say, how do we make this simple? How do we make sure every single couple is treated like a whole person, uh -huh. a whole couple, and that they can engage in this course in the privacy of their own home. They can treat this as date night. They can pour some wine. They can have some tea. And they can do a modular week for eight weeks, whatever. It's a seven and a half hour program. And uh, yeah, so our whole goal is to be very complimentary and to make sure that uh, emotional health and well being is a standard part of the way in which people are being cared for. Yeah, I, that's, um, that's phenomenal that you guys partner with um, NAPRO doctors and stuff because, yeah, if you just offered it as a standalone, that wouldn't really be in the spirit of what you're doing because what you're trying to say is all of this comes together right. into this whole piece and it's not you know doing this disjointed thing is 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 part of the problem it's it's um yeah not conducive to your message it also it makes total sense that you're partnering with doctors and that it's being offered as this comprehensive package, it sounds like. Um, yes, we saw some of the best NAPRO doctors across the world that just believe that we're the, the element. Most people say you're the missing link. We're doing so much physically. And we had a woman, one a NAPRO doctor, that's very well known, a woman completed the program and she wrote to him, she said, uh, it wasn't until I got to the program, I didn't realize how much resentment I was carrying. And in parentheses, she put to the doctors, to my family, to my husband, to the world. And, and you think about this, he goes, I was trying to do everything possible to work on her physical body. She didn't even realize she had this kind of anger and resentment at not just, you know, the doctor, the family, the world. So I think the burden is there. It's how do we relieve it? How do we bring them the tools? How do we allow them just to better understand emotionally that they're, you know, they're going through something that's difficult and that's okay. And we're still not saying there's not hard days and difficult days, but we definitely think this is a course that starts to inspire people to think differently about their paths forward. And we've had a couple recently just tell us that the result of the program they decided to adopt. And again, we don't tell people what to do. That's right. most people thinking, you tell us diet. You we don't tell you what to do. That's not our job. We challenge your intentions to make sure you are part of the control and that you're doing things that are still honoring you and your relationship and your religion and things that really matter to you. And that we're not putting ourselves alongside as we just, push through, but we're not here to tell people what to do. I think everyone is telling you what to do when you're struggling. This is about becoming your own safe place and start to trust themselves. As well, part really, of um, if you have a real space for radical honesty, which with the space of infertility, with reproductive technologies, I feel like there's a lot of hiding um, from ourselves, from our thoughts, from our intentions 
from what other people think. There's just all this, um, yeah, there's just this kind of like hiding that goes on, if, if that makes sense to put it yes. that way. And, and because we're scared of the thoughts that we're thinking, like you were talking about the resentment that we're holding. And um, like, I can remember being in, in mass and seeing families with young children and, and just having that feeling like, why was she gifted that? And and, and we're not, you know, the, and those feelings, they're ugly and they make you yeah. feel ugly. And so you, you try to push them down deep, you try to hide them. And to have the space that organic conception sounds like it offers to, to bring those feelings out and to bring them to light and, and be able to have that radical honesty um, with yourself and with your spouse. Gosh, it sounds like it's healing. <laughs> Well, you know what it is? When you can give someone the, first of all, when you can normalize that it's okay for your experience, I know it sounds so basic, but truly because the emotions are so extreme and so many people are so frustrated themselves that they've been having that thought. So when you can normalize something, it's incredibly powerful. But also when you can give someone the words and the context to what just felt like raw emotions and feelings as you move through this, this journey and you vacillate between all these different stages, um, that, and so many people say that, I, I always felt that the program needs to do some magical thing. And early on, we just realized just helping them to say, oh my gosh, I'm here. Yeah. And I see where I came from. And I, I have some insight and hope in terms of where I need to go. Yeah. It's their job to then do the work. It's their job to say, wow, I see how this is manifesting. I see how this is showing up in my marriage. I see how this is showing up in the decisions I make. I see how this is showing up in terms of my social isolation. I, and it starts to allow people to really create their own map forward. Um, but I think that when something just doesn't feel like we can make sense of it, we can't really process it, and it just feels so ugly and unknown, when you could start to say there's these steps, these stages, it just say, oh, I have the words and the context and understanding to understand what that is, and I, I can see it better. And when you can see it better, you can have, have a choice on how you handle it. Yeah. I, I like the, the word that you used before, raw, that these, these emotions feel so raw, and I think um, they're like untamed, and it almost feels like this animal that's like, yeah, just attacking us, and to be able to see that chart, and to see, you know, no, yeah, it's, it's coming from a raw place, but, you know, it's, it's human, ultimately, right. and it's a shared human experience across the board, especially as, you know, infertility has been on the rise. Um, and, and as humans, we, we like to be able to name things. We like to be able to categorize things. We like to be able to make sense of things. It's just in our nature. Um, it helps us, you know, what we're talking about, feel that ownership, that control, um, less like things are happening to us and more like we are, you know, kind of, kind of owning what's happening. Um, and yeah, I, to be able to look at a chart like that when we were going through what we, we went through would have been, for me, especially as somebody who likes things neat and orderly and categorized, you'll see, okay, we're here. And, you know, other people have been here. They've been at this point and that's okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's phenomenal. That's great. Um, and I think with Dr. Kate, I mean, she's the psychologist on the program with me. Um, but she's the one and it was incredible what I was learning as she would break down why it's normal that humans process things certain ways. So each of these stages, you get the kind of the therapist perspective to say, oh my gosh, we do. We leap to conclusions. We overgeneralize. We focus on, I mean, there's just certain ways in which we are just designed. And knowing that is like, okay, I see it. I get it. Then you can also realize that there's a lot of things that easily sneak up on us. Yeah. That put us in the wrong mental state of, of health that can absolutely wear down our our emotional health and um and i think that there's just a lot of third party research that speaks to that does show up in our stress levels our hormone balance our ability to be clarity in terms of decision making and um it was the new york times had an article come out recently they talked about that um infertility is a, a form of trauma and yeah. Yeah. even the best doctors say regardless of outcome everyone right now just wants to give in the baby everything will be quite going perfect and everything is great and i get that life's easy to look back in retrospect, where you look at things saying, oh, I get why that happened then. And that was gift. And, but we, we want this to be fixed. We want this to be solved. But what we learn, like we know in anything in life, it's truly the journey and how we endure this together. And if couples are not processing what they're going through emotionally, we're not dealing with these emotions, 
they show back up. They show back up in the marriage. They show back up in your health. Yeah. And yeah. the best NAPRO doctors said that an outcome is it's the way in which these couples are actually getting through this and enduring this together because putting babies into the mix just doesn't make everything else go away. Right. So it's about that journey. Although I know that if I'm hearing this, I'm thinking this isn't, you know, I didn't, I don't want to be going through this as a chance to improve my marriage. I just want a baby, you know, and I feel that urgency of wanting it to happen now, but you, you got to realize that it's, it's how we're enduring this together that really matters because we know this in life and you know, there's other uncertainties, other times that will face a couple and it's their ability to really see how they show up together. That will matter. Right. One word that is really kind of popping up in my mind right now as we're talking about all this that we haven't spoken aloud yet is resilience. And it sounds mm -hmm. like this program really um, builds individual resilience as well as resilience in, in a marriage and in a relationship. And like you're saying, that's going to be applicable no matter the outcome, um, no matter where you end up down the line, having that resilience, because there is going to be, there are going to be challenges in a marriage, whether there's kids in the mix or not. Right. And to have built up that resilience, to have done that emotional groundwork, laying that groundwork um, is, is so important. Um, yeah. So. It is. So we had a lot of type A women just, no, I need to fix this. I need to solve this. I've been told, you know, in life, when things don't go your way, you overcome it, you push past it, you don't show weakness. <laughs> so think about it. That's saying, I'm doing this alone. I'll, I'll fix this. I'll solve it. Don't worry. I got the next thing we're going to try, 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 try. And to ask someone to pause, not stop, to emotionally come to understanding and think the way we're thinking and, and spend some time understanding what we're, we're going through is it's not the easiest ask, Grace, ask. It's, it's a, it's a, I think those that do it, it's unbelievable the results we see when we can change someone's life. Um, but you're, uh, I give hats off to a lot of people. We not only have the online course, but I now have a clinical social worker that joins my team just to reach out to members. And if someone's just getting stuck or they feel like they want to talk to someone, getting through the course is, um, it, it will take someone's commitment, like any course that you would pursue. If anything that's meaningful, it's going to take some time and you're going to put people, I don't think uncomfortable, but you're going to start to, you're, you're going to uncover what's already there. The question is, are we ready to uncover it? And actually talk about it? Yeah. So I'm curious, have you ever had um, like a, a NAPA provider say they offer um, your course as part of their, their total package of treatment to a couple? Have you ever had a couple who um, that you've heard of that had, was like pushing back on doing that? and um you know didn't necessarily want to do it but it was part of the the package of treatment and they ended up going through it and were really glad that they did have you had that kind of testimony we i mean just i think uh honestly just a couple of weeks ago we heard from a napro doctor and then a crate model practitioner two with you know success you know and i i try to be cautious with those because you always hear someone promoting a success and yeah. If you're still struggling, it makes you feel worse. So our best success is someone that's still living with that uncertainty, but they tell us, oh my gosh, this woman wrote, because this was like reading my mind. I feel like I came out of a dark cave. I didn't know I was in. I feel like for the first time in years, I, I'm living again and hopeful about the future. And those are the best six stories. But yes, um, we've had a lot of people that, you know, and that's why we're only successful when we have good partners that yeah. they're yeah. already going to, that they trust. And yeah. it's when your partner looks at them and says, hey, we don't know we're going to end up at the end of these three, four, five, six months, whatever it might be, but we know we're going to bring you to a better place, you know, physically and emotionally and as a couple. And sometimes, um, you know, it's the doctor that says, you got to trust me. you got to trust me. I had one doctor offer a dinner gift certificate for those that completed the course to say, trust me, because sometimes you don't know what you need when you're in a state of panic, you know? <laughs> but yeah, and we hear successes of people that, oh my gosh, they came back to themselves, they came back to their marriage, and that's so easier said than done. You really got to work through a process that really, lasting change, you can't just trick yourself and temporarily for a day or two feel better. It's through this process that we move people through, we can just start to become, it's, it's kind of a new state of being. It's, you start to that mindset, the way we're thinking is leading to the way we act, the way we act every month, the same results give us that same feeling. And it's a cycle that keeps repeating itself. And how do you break that where you actually start to think differently, choose differently, and start to experience things that give us a better feeling when it's all a negative cycle. It just becomes a way of being. 
it, it, they, we get clouded that our whole life, our whole perspective, our whole journey is just, we're just stuck. And I think that you got to disrupt that cycle. And, and by doing that, a lot of cases is bringing in, you know, new things that bring us new joy. And you have to do this in a sustained amount of time that actually changes the way we're thinking, the way we're feeling, the way we're then making decisions. And, and you know, when you bring all these pieces into alignment, you do it as a couple, you're just, you're such a stronger entity at that point, which is incredible. So yeah, it's um, a lot of times it's the doctor saying or practitioners, you just got to trust me, you know, and, yeah. and what's an hour a week as a couple. This is one of the yeah. hardest times you're going through. We'll turn off the TV, turn off the internet and just take some time and go through this. We're not asking you to drive in the car to go to another meeting, another car. Just literally sit through this as a couple. And it's socially friendly for right now too. Yeah, so. For now, the timing is good. We all have a lot of extra time. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and, and when, when in our lives do we get a chance to pause and reflect right. and reconnect? And that's, we, we do a monthly support group that we're now doing every week for our members just to keep people lifted. And we talked about the three R's. It is about reflecting. Because so many, it's easy to create a life around trying. And there's yeah. pressure in trying, the constant yeah. trying. So that's been taken off our back, like it or not. There's a lot of the trying that is just, we're not able to do what we thought we would, we wanted to do. Um, so it's about reflecting. It's about reconnecting as a couple. We have more time together than ever. It's how we're going to use that time. And then I think if we do that, we can then reimagine our lives. Because for so many, we're so focused on what we don't have and what was missing now you look at what we're all missing. We're all missing just love and connections and relationship. And I think for many, you'll realize all the wonderful gifts we already have. And yes, we're going through a difficult time, but gosh, there's some special things that are here for us. And, the, and everyone here, they matter now. And this time is important time for them to be doing things that matter to them and to, to, to life. So yeah. this is a night, this is a time for people to say, hey, you know, let's, let's, do it from home in the safety of their own home and use that chance to reflect and reconnect. You know, why not? So who is organic conceptions for? Is it for a couple who is actively, um, you know, in some sort of infertility treatment, whether it's NAPRO, whether it's something else? Um, is it for a couple who hasn't started trying yet, but think they might want to and are already a little concerned they might have issues? Is it, you know, is it for all of the above? Um, yeah, the, I, I, there's usually the four categories. I think um, we definitely try to get to people earlier because we saw yeah. see such loss, loss in relationships and marriage and even people choosing treatment that wasn't the right thing, but they felt pressured, yeah. pressured yeah. from society. You've got to go now. What are you waiting on? Doctors, come here. This is what you need to do. So I think that um, there are a lot of people who use the program just looking for kind of a natural uh, support, you know, and they just, they've been trying for some time. They have that early worry, early concern, unsure what to do. Um, so that's excellent. We do have uh, many that are using this alongside of treatment, whether they're early on in their charting or they're working, you know, day to day with a NAPRO doctor. Um, that becomes another area. Um, a third area, maybe it's just three, is, is some people that just feel like they need a break. Just unsure. Yeah. Maybe they're just burnt out by all the trying and all the, you know, if they do treatment or not. But some people just want to do a reset. I just got to find center before I even know what step to take again. Um, so we definitely, it's either kind of someone looking for a natural approach, um, someone that's working alongside of a, a, a practitioner or a napro doctor, or thirdly, um, you got someone that might just to feel like they just need to time out, take a break, kind of a chance to just find themselves again to then decide how to best move forward. Yeah. Um, yeah, it sounds like it, it's it's applicable for all those people and all the, all those different stages. Um, one one question I, I just I have to ask if you've received in, in testimony because um, I, I feel like it organic conceptions is is conducive to this is um, you know one thing that really strikes people about trying and especially if you've been trying for a while is how unenjoyable sex becomes and. I'm wondering if you've had couples tell you that they're actually able to enjoy sex again after <laughs> going through the program, because I, I could imagine that being an outcome and a, and a great testimony if that is yeah. something that you hear. It, it, it is. I mean, let's face it. You went through it. I went through it. I mean, it's, it's not intimacy. It's not listening to our bodies when there's that natural chemistry. It, it's planned relations. It's, it's yeah. timed and I, I'd be the first. And at some point you need to laugh at yourself, but I'll never forget my wife, you know, call me up at work and 
you know, have some caffeine before you come home and you just, I mean, this is brutal. This is crazy. This is just not the way this is supposed to be. But um, so, yeah, I think that what we're trying to do is that, you know, and, and those things, there might be a time and a place for sure, but if it's someone, you know, our ability to actually feel like we want to be connected at a certain time, there is that natural body's instinct that is when the body is ready. So, um, yeah, our ability not to be completely robotic and mechanical and feeling like we're just a factory here, that's just yeah, all the things are lined up, you know, physically, and that we, we want to start to come to that deep, you know, trust in ourselves and our bodies. And um, so, yeah, we do hear that quite frequently. That, And again, we're not here to tell people to chart or not, but everyone's different. But for some, yeah. that could be potentially something that's just burdening them and too much and constant reminders of what's not happening or is happening. It's But for others, it's confidence and understanding that cycle. So, there's no one size fits all. And that's why it's not our job to tell them that, but for someone to come back to themselves and say, I gotta trust myself in this. And you know when things are out of sorts, you know when things are just completely not feeling like they are the way they should be. But we all have to try. We did for, you know, that was my life for many, many years. And at some point you, you, you come to this point where enough's enough, I have to value myself. And, and there's, you know, another way in which we can get through this together. And maybe we go back to certain things at a later point in time, but you got to honor yourself and intimacy should be at the core of this. Yeah, that's great. Um, so right now, uh, one thing we've been talking about at Natural Womanhood is just how important it is. Um, and maybe this is a good, good place to end is especially right now with everything that's going on. Um, how important is it um, to take that step back? and really evaluate our emotional health and um, yeah, use these unprecedented circumstances. And we've kind of touched on it a little bit already, but for somebody who might just be thinking they just got to gut through, um, you know, the quarantine, get through the social distancing, and then they'll get back to whatever they were doing in their previous life. You know, what, what could organic conceptions offer now and why right now? Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. I, you know, I feel like now more than ever, we're all feeling probably emotionally overwhelmed. And I think that a lot of what the program probably teaches you through your own kind of, you become the teacher through the process, but you realize that, you know, we're not as in control as we think. And it's when we can relinquish some of that control. And, and it, be, it, it comes back to trust really at the end of the day. And I think that it's a skill that we all need to have, whether it's our fertility struggle or what we're all dealing with right now, right? It's to, it's when people start to say, we don't, we won't have all the answers. This will not go the way our timeline and the way we saw ourselves in our sequence of life of we all get engaged and married and bought the house and got the dog and then we're the kids. And I just think there's a, a bigger lesson here that, that we can all take away. And I think to have the tools to understand how to endure during times of uncertainty and the skills that you need to call into attention and to, you know, um, th they're necessary far beyond this one particular struggle. And a lot of people when they write us is this just helped me greater than just my fertility struggles. Yes, it did. But this is, um, you know, for so many people, I mean, think about what we're going through now. I mean, how do you not start to, we, you got to trust, but for so many people, you know, we're not really allowing our spirit, spiritual element to be part of this. We're just, we're, we're just physically caring for ourselves. So, yeah, I think now more than ever, I mean, let's face it, we're all emotionally feeling it. You're not human if you're not feeling it. If you were someone that was struggling and now you're, you're dealing with this uncertainty, I just think it's a multiplier effect. I think those that didn't ever think that they need emotional health, this maybe is that time to say, there's nothing wrong. This isn't suggesting something wrong with you. This is actually just how do we put ourselves in such a favorable place? And, and I, it would only be my hope that the tools that someone might learn through a program like this can help um, help you guide other times and navigate other times of incredible difficulties. And I think that, you know, now we all, I mean, we, no one would be honest to say this isn't a hard time. Um, so yeah, you hope that people have the time to maybe connect with themselves because it's easier to keep running great. It's easier to keep going. It's yeah. easier to keep physically caring for yourselves because when you're doing something physical it's tangible i can see it i can touch it i can change my diet i can feel like it. you're asking someone to emotionally explore it's just a it's a hard place but let's face it it will happen that at some point in our lives we all have to we'll come to some point where we have to 
emotionally become more connected. And, you know, I think that those that can do it sooner and have that as a trait that they can stand beside and guide them through life is an incredible place. And I think about these people struggling, they're our future parents. They're gonna need these skills to guide future life, whether it's through adoption or naturally or whatever it might be. And um, we need to be equipping ourselves right now. Now is the gift, now is the preparation, now is the time to put ourselves in the best position to go take this next step forward, which is raising children, which as you know, is a, a huge and difficult thing to go do. And you have to be in the right mindset. Otherwise, you know, they will break you. So. <laughs> I know that all too well. I'm a 10-month-old who doesn't nap. So. <laughs> you know what, Grace? The last thing I'll say, because you mentioned to it, is a lot of people who struggle, they don't feel like they can have a bad day when they do have kids. They feel like, wow, I prayed for this forever. I, I didn't think I was entitled to, to go through some of the realities of post, you know, um, having children. And, it's, it's an, and, and it gets me back to why emotionally we have to be connected, not suppressing, because you know, um, anyone that dealt with the struggle, they can still have the struggle parenting yeah. and being parents and going through all that particular phase as well. So, yeah, so that's the message. We, we have to, we have, our emotions need to be part of who we are, the good and the bad. Yeah, that's great. Well, I think that that's, that's an excellent place to stop. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, you said it all. And right now it's, there's a lot that makes sense about diving into something, something like this. Yeah. The last thing I'll say is just so you know, for those that do come to our website, we offer just, so you know, it's a money back guarantee. I feel so cheesy when I say that, but I guess the point is if we truly don't get someone to a better place, Grace, we don't want their money. It's not why we got into this work. If yeah. we can't bring you to a better place where you look back and say, this program saved me and took me through a tough time. If we can't, then this isn't about monetizing someone and trying to convince someone in a difficult time and try to monetize someone to pay 99 bucks for a program. It's just, it's not that, it's not why we got into it. I tell people, if we don't bring you, not, not every program is for everyone. If we honestly don't bring you, when you look back and say, this, this is what I needed, then, you know, there's no risk. I want it to be no risk. Either their doctor's providing it or we're saying do it. And if it's yeah. going to be healthy, then no worries. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Yeah, that, that's great. And yeah, what do you have to lose then, right? What do you have to lose? Give it a shot. If we don't yeah. help you, then, then no skin off your back. If we do, then amazing. And those, yeah. those that we were able to help seem to, to be very grateful for that and that we guided them during the tough time. So, but thanks for having me, Grace. I really appreciate this time. And I love the work that Natural Womanhood, all of you are doing. What an incredible staff, what an incredible mission and in education and the work that you are doing is so empowering for couples. So I'm, I'm truly honored to be, you know, part of this. Yeah, we're, we're thrilled to be partnered with you guys. I know I, I speak on behalf of, of everybody um, on the team at Natural Womanhood because, yeah, the work that you're doing is so in line with, with our passion and, and our, um, yeah, our whole ethos about treating, treating women, treating couples as, as whole, whole people. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks for having me.